Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. Hope everyone's doing well. Kind of getting over a post-World Series funk, both physically and mentally. It's kind of tough to suffer loss when you're rooting for a team as hard as you are, but it was a uh, an incredible time being there in Phoenix where I brought back a lifetime of memories and a cold. So if I sound like shit, uh, I'm sick. So thank you for bearing with that and welcome back as we continue our series on FCS conferences. Today we're going to be looking at the Ivy League conference, which is known the entire world over as being home to some of the greatest universities on the planet. And a lot of great sports schools here too, especially in terms of football. We owe a lot of modern day college football to the Ivy League, some primo history within this league for kind of being the pioneer of college football as we know it today. We're about a week out from being able to watch and experience the game, which is the name of the rivalry between Yale University and Harvard University. It's one of the biggest college football games of the year. This is an incredible conference, and I'm really excited to talk about it as we explore the logos of the Ivy League. As always, these are just my opinions, and if uh, you get upset, that's cool. Just let me know down in the comments where I got it wrong. But thank you for clicking either way. Let's go ahead and start with what I consider the worst logo in this league. At number eight, it's going to give us Brown University. Now, Brown announced pretty recently that this was what they were going for with like a modern look to their logo. We can go ahead and look here at a before and after for what they've done, kind of modernizing, cleaning up the logo a bit. And I do think that overall it looks pretty nice. I especially really like what they call the abominable look with the bear in the background, kind of ties this whole thing together because this team is the Brown Bears. So we have Brown, the name of the school, and the bear in the background. I really like logos that include both the name of the school or at least the letter for the school, in this case, B for Brown, and then the mascot that they represent with the bear in the background. I think that looks great. But I just don't like this just B as the actual logo, just the primary mark for this uh, brown B for the brown bears. And I'm not super stoked on the coloring of just brown and red with a little bit of white. Ah, the old alma mater. I tell you, there's something magical about brown. Brown's the color of poo! <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. But if you're a big fan of just standard block lettering to represent a university or a team, you're in luck because the Ivy League is full of them. At number seven, we've got Dartmouth, which is the very, it's very similar energy as what we just saw with brown. I have this one ranked a little higher because I just really like the color combination of green and white. I just think that looks a lot nicer than red and brown because I mean, this team is the big green. This is the Dartmouth big green. So that green should shine through because it's literally the name of the team. Overall, like as far as their history goes, they haven't had a ton of exceptional logos to look at. It's always kind of focused on this uh, this big green D, which is actually front and center on their uh, helmets too for football. Not my favorite logo by any means, but the colors are really nice and we're gonna see something very similar with this. And number six with Yale, home of the Bulldogs. Now history of college football cannot be complete without talking about Yale University and the Yale Bowl. Just a very iconic look to their stadium that's given us a modern design for most of the historic and well-known college football stadiums that we know today. So I gotta give big props to that. Yale is a very cool team to talk about, but their logo currently doesn't really do a whole lot for me, but historically they've had some incredible, incredible logos that they've used. I'm a huge fan of the years 1960 to 1995. The 1960 to 72 big poofy meaty unit of a bulldog looks so awesome and that logo that we can see there from 97 to 2019 they will use from time to time and i do appreciate more when yale uses this logo with having the bulldog in front of that y so we can see both the name of the school y for yale and the bulldog in front kind of ties the two things together but really what they're using now it really just goes back to what they were originally using in the early 1900s with just a big block Y, which looked good then, it still looks good now, but it doesn't really stand out in a whole lot of ways. This kind of reminds me of just like a more uh, kind of blockier varsity lettering for Brigham Young University with their Y. And so overall, not bad. I understand the kind of wanting to simplify and using kind of what worked for, you know, 70 years, going back from 1901 to 1972. But I kind of just wish there was a little bit more incorporation for that Bulldog. I think that 97 to 2019 was among the best years for this team and their logo. Because again, they had some great uses of the Bulldog logo throughout their history. At number five, we've got Columbia here in New York City. And we can see kind of our first and really kind of like only deviation from a logo in this league using something that's not just a block letter. This is something that's a little bit more unique and inventive, although they do still use just a hard C. We can see that if we go to Google Maps and look at their athletic facilities, which is just across the river from the Bronx in upper Manhattan. A very neat school. I really appreciate the fact that it's like right there 
in uh, the upper west side of Manhattan. And they've just got some really nice facilities and overall a very cool school, but we're focusing on their logo. So I'm not trying to distract myself from that a little bit, but um, if we just focus on the logo here, the lion does look a little cross-eyed in my opinion. And uh, he, he's not very fierce as maybe he is trying to be kind of looks like he's like holding back some of that intensity a little bit i think their logos throughout their history were just uh, a little bit more inventive and creative and unique especially 1957 and 1970 that thing is wild looking that was a very medieval looking logo but in 1997 they came up with this design and we haven't seen a whole lot of change really since then and i kind of wish we would i think this lion could just be a little bit more fierce and a little bit tougher than it's trying to be at number four we've got the university of pennsylvania home to the quakers this is the first of two logos that we're going to see that has a banner design kind of like a flag and i think it looks great overall it's just very clean and sharp and crisp we see that p for pen and we can see pen up at the very top to know that we're looking at the university of pennsylvania again home to just an iconic stadium very old ton of history right there in downtown philadelphia and this logo looks fantastic on the uniforms overall just very cool and they haven't had to do a whole lot of change there's kind of an older p that still has that red and blue kind of split at an angle going going through and yeah it looked great then and it looks great now shout out to this quaker guy leaning on a p for pen i think that this looks awesome as well i actually really like this design which is why i also really like number three harvard university just a white h inside of a crimson because they're the crimson flag or shield i won't lie i mean overall this looks very simple and it is but i have it ranked so high a little bit because of just the prestige and the weight and the history that this uh that this logo carries i mean this has just not had any significant change for over 100 years and it hasn't really needed to because it, it's just worked so well for so long and i think that harvard kind of skates by a little bit on just having a simple design that has really just stood the test of time and it's just very clean and crisp and it doesn't need to be too flashy or try too much because of the prestige that this university has beautiful uniforms too this h has just always looked great on their helmets and the colors that they've used for their football uniforms are just i mean it's just so beautiful but if we want to take a complete 180 from that uh let's take a look at princeton here um which also just carries as we've seen throughout this ranking just kind of a simple letter to represent the school p for princeton but 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 this stands out a little bit from the rest of the logos that we've looked at because this carries not only the letter for the school but a tie-in to the actual mascot because this is the princeton tigers and so we see this tiger design all throughout the lettering of the p and that is just a really simple yet effective way to tie in the school and the mascot all in one piece it's gorgeous. If we look at some of their old logos throughout the years, we can see that they have given at times um, more impact or significance to the tiger itself. And all of these look fantastic, but just focusing on just this simple P for Princeton with the tiger design in the background, all in one piece. I mean, this is absolutely gorgeous. But to take that one step further, that idea of taking the lettering for the school and the mascot that the team represents, putting those pieces together into one beautiful, perfect logo, I gotta give it to Cornell University, home of the Big Red. Their mascot is Big Red Bear, and here he is popping out of this, this huge, stately, stoic, varsity-lettered C for Cornell, wrapping around the whole thing. It's just awesome this is fantastic this has both that big bold block lettering that we've seen all throughout for every single team in the ivy league with a more modern fierce mascot that the team is representing this is the best of both worlds one of my favorite logos in all of college football this looks fantastic cornell university in beautiful upstate new york yeah like cornell awesome logo some of their old logos look pretty good too my favorite is always just going to be the one that we see here the bear leaning against the sea for cornell that's such an iconic look for old university logos with the mascot leaning against the <laughs> letter for the school love that that's so sick you know i once dated a couple guys from cornell they were really nice they gave me a ride home i seriously doubt that anyone from cornell dated you it's pronounced colonel it's the highest rank in the military it's pronounced cornell it's the highest rank in the ivy league andy <sighs> <laughs> That's Big Red Bear. That's a bobble Big Red Bear. God! This ranking was a lot of fun to put together, but it was a little tough because, again, uh, you could see a lot of similarities for a lot of these logos here. They're just very stately and stoic, and they kind of carry with them that prestige, that history of just being among some of the oldest, most reputable, well-known, smarty pants schools in the world. And so we can see these universities also have, like, an official seal that all look very smart and sharp and crisp, too. And so if I had to rank those blindly without knowing any of the context behind any of the imagery or the text, here's how I would rank those with number eight, seven, 
six, five, four, three, two, and one. Here's the best. This was very fun to put together, guys. I sincerely appreciate you hanging out. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see featured or explored in future videos as far as college football leagues or logos. And go ahead and give a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video and subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you, guys. As always, appreciate it. We'll see you in the next video.